Today I'm going to walk you through a typical use case for using GitHub Copilot on a daily basis. So imagine you're a developer and you've just started a new job or maybe you're starting a new project. You get handed the project file and there might not be other developers around to ask. You might be unfamiliar with the actual programming language itself or even how the project is structured. You're asked to make some changes and you're sitting there wondering who to ask. Luckily for us, we can use our AI pair programmer GitHub Copilot to help. Let's take a look. So here's my pet spotter repo. So this repository is a project for creating an app that is a simple find and help locate my lost pet. So imagine if I've lost a pet, I can snap a photo using my phone. I can upload that photo and say, hey, I've lost this pet. Has anyone seen it? Imagine if you're someone who's found a pet, you can snap a photo and it uses AI image matching to match up with some of the lost pets that have been submitted. While we're here on our repository, we can also use GitHub Copilot from the .com experience. If I click the Copilot icon next to my username, a little Copilot pane will come up. Now, if I want to ask questions specifically about this repository, I'd need to index it. But before we do that, we can ask some generic questions from GitHub Copilot, such as, how do I shorten a URL? GitHub Copilot has a think and it generates the answer for me. So there are several ways to shorten and it's even giving me links to websites I can go and shorten my URL. So that was something a little bit more general, but if we want to ask specific questions about our repository, we need to index it. So I can click GitHub Copilot and index this repository. Now this may take several minutes. While that's indexing, we can actually ask GitHub Copilot other questions. So if we have a look at our immersive view, we can have a look at all the topics that we could ask about. And GitHub Copilot is even showing us some of the popular repositories that we've been working on. I can also have a new conversation with GitHub Copilot. We could ask something very specific. Let's ask about GitHub Advanced Security. So how to create a token for my API call. And it is creating a response to me and even giving me some of the code snippets as well. So if we head back to our pet spotter repository, we can check to see if this has already been indexed. So if we click the GitHub Copilot icon again, we can see that repository has now been indexed. So we can now ask questions specifically about this repository, such as how does the pet spotter app work? So it's telling me where it's getting the information from. So it's taking the information from the readme here and giving some information about some of the files and where these things are located. And it's even giving me the references here. So I can see where it's actually taking the information from. So this is a really good way we can now ask questions specifically about our own code base. Let's pop it onto our local machine and go from there. So for me, I like to use the GitHub CLI to use this. So if I open up a terminal, I run it as administrator and make sure it's always working. We can go GH just to double check that we've got GitHub installed and working. I can CD into my location where all our repos are stored. And now we can clone the repository we want to. So for this, it's just GH repo clone and the owner of the repository and the name of the repository. So in this case, it's workshops slash pet spotter. And that will clone it onto our local machine. Now, once that is cloned, I can go to the location of where that's cloned and we can open it up in our editor of choice. For me, that's VS Code. So I can open up Visual Studio and we can grab the one we just opened, our pet spotter, and we can open up here in VS Code. So for me, I already have GitHub Copilot installed here. We can tell it's installed by looking down the bottom. You can see that I've got our little GitHub Copilot icon down here. And we can see that we've also got the extensions installed uh, chat. We need to ensure that chat is installed. So we can double check that these are installed by heading over to marketplace or to our extensions and ensuring that we've got GitHub Copilot. So we need both uh, GitHub Copilot and GitHub Copilot chat installed. So you can see here this one's installed. Once we've ensured we've got GitHub Copilot installed, we can start browsing through the files. So let's have a look at some of the files that we've got here. So this is our back end and this is our front end for our pet spotter repo. Now, if we had a look at this for the first time, we might have no idea how this is actually working. So what I can do is I can go, in, uh, this is running in Razor. So I could go to uh, say my index folder. This is the homepage. I can have a look at the lost pet and I can say, I have no idea how this is working. I can open up GitHub Copilot chat on the side here. I can type explain and it will explain the code that is on screen for me. 
So it's seeing here, it's got the reference for the file and it's saying this is part of a Blaze component, specifically a form for reporting a lost pet. Here's a breakdown of the code. So it's starting to explain to me how the code is working, how it's running and how I might need to make uh, some changes. So it's even telling me the conditional rendering is done and is active. Now, if we had a look here and say, okay, well, how do we actually change some of these things? So this is a form for inputting our lost pet. Say somebody has told me the form is doing really well at the moment, but if we have a look at it, we can see that there's currently no way to add the location of where you found the pet. So if I needed to add that in, and maybe we've got a few more options here, we might just have not have dog and cat, we might have other things that have been lost. Get up profile, it's gonna start working there and might even give me some options. So say we've also lost a bird, there we go, get up copilot it's gonna be a bird. We might also have lost other, so we can leave that there. Now, if we wanted to create a um, input here for location, I could possibly copy and paste some of this code. I could also just ask GitHub Copilot chat, how do I add a location input for the form? And GitHub Copilot chat will again, double check that this is the uh, file reference we're using and can tell us about how to do this. Now, what I like about GitHub Copilot is it doesn't just spit out the code, it actually gives me an explanation of what it's doing rather than just saying, here's the code. So it says to, lo to add a location input, you can add another div block. Inside this block, you can put the parameters you need. And even like once it's given me the code, it said this code creates an input field the location and then binds it to a two-way data and we'll need to add the location property to our pet class model if it doesn't already exist. So what we can do is we can say this looks really good. So say we wanted to add this in, put a new line here and if we wanted this code we can literally just, it's GitHub Copilot in line is also giving it to me, but we can just click the, the button on GitHub Copilot chat and it will insert the code that it is asking for. So we can see here now this might look good, but this is just an input value at the moment. So maybe we could ask them like, how do I create this as a drop down location selector? Because if we have it as a input, a lot of people might come in, they might give us suburbs, some people might give us towns. So if we have a drop down, then we get what we actually might want. So what we can do is we highlight the bit that we just did. We can insert the new code over the top here. You can see now it's created a label form for us and it's given us an input selector. So it says here, add more options as needed. Now I could grab these options here. So New York, Los Angeles and Chicago. I'm in Australia, so maybe I could even use the inline text and let's say add suburbs to the drop down and give the options for suburbs located in Melbourne, Australia. Let's see how good GitHub Copilot is. So it's giving me Melbourne as an option, Geelong as an option, Bendigo. So these are all suburbs in Victoria. So this is actually pretty good. I could go through, all I'm doing to select these is selecting tab, which allows me to accept the suggestion that GitHub Copilot is giving me. So I create a new line. These are all suburbs here in not just Melbourne to give me the whole of Victoria, but the fact that it does this is pretty good. So I think this is looking really great. And we can get rid of these New York ones if we want, or we could leave them in. Now, the next thing we need to do is it says over here under GitHub Copilot chat, it's giving me some information to say, we need to add a location property to the pet model class if it doesn't already exist. So maybe we could say something like, uh, it's even giving me options for this as well. So how can I add validation? Let's say, where do I add the location property to my pet model class? Now you can see I do need some experience and knowledge of what I'm doing as a developer, but by using GitHub Copilot, this is a project that I may not have worked on. It might be things that I'm unfamiliar with. I don't really know Blazor that well. So by using GitHub Copilot, it can help me understand how to actually do these things. So it says the pet oh, so is likely to find a separate CS file and you need to open that file and add a property. So what we can do is we can leave this open so because that will give context to GitHub Copilot. So GitHub Copilot takes into account any context of files that are already open. So it said if we need to find the other CS model. So there's probably a page called pet model. So we might even be able to search this as well if we wanted to. 
but let's have a quick look. It's in under data. There we go, it's over under data. So you can see here we've got public class model. We can see we've got all these names, all these models and classes for the different form inputs. Now it said we needed one. The pet model class is likely to find a separate CS file. So we found it, pet model CS. And you'll need to open that file and add a new property location. So it's telling me how to do that. Existing properties are already here. Now GitHub Copilot's relatively smart. It now has the context of this file because it's open. So if I add a new line here, GitHub Copilot should hopefully maybe already give it to me, but I can also start typing public string and it's telling me image location. So there's images there, but let's put location here. So set and get, so that's really good. And we also need to add it under here as well to our constructors. So if I click here, it's already adding me um, location as well. So I can save all these things now and I can commit those files if I need to. So using GitHub Copilot, I'm able to um, unblock and unstick myself so I can make some changes to code and get started almost straight away. Gone are the days where we have to wait hours, weeks, days to get the computer we need, to get all the credentials we need, and then to sit down with the senior developer and actually understand our code. And we need to make sure we always test our code. So let's pretend we've tested our code and this all works fine. We now want to commit it. So let's go and save all our files. Make sure we save all the ones we've worked on. And now let's commit this. I like to use GitHub Desktop. So if we hop over here to GitHub Desktop, we can see there's a couple of files changed. So let's check out and let's create a new branch called Mish Manners Changes. And we'll create this branch. We can bring my changes over to my branch. We can switch to branch over here. Now we can commit all these changes. So let's say add in location to form. Let's be really specific and descriptive about the types of comments and uh, commit messages we make. This means that when we go back to have a look through our history, we know exactly what our commit is for. So we can commit these changes to Mish Manners. Now this branch hasn't been published to remote yet, but we can publish it to GitHub and then open a pull request. So let's go ahead and publish this branch. Now, once that branch is published, we can go over to GitHub and we can create a pull request. I want to do this on the web because I want to show you a cool new feature that we've released for pull requests as well. So in the past, some people will click this and say, yep, it's done, create a pull request and just leave it as it is. With the power of GitHub Copilot, we can create really descriptive and really informative pull requests. So if I click this little GitHub Copilot button here, I can create a summary of all the changes in the pull request. So I click that button, GitHub Copilot thinks for a little bit. It's looking at the changes that have happened between the, the two files in this case that I've got, what's actually being changed, what's being added, what's maybe been deleted, and how do those changes potentially affect. So this comes up with a little uh, description said it primarily focuses on enhancing the pet cast model and the page in the application. The most significant change is adding a location property and extending the raised values to include more pet types because we did add those extra pet types in. So in addition to the class model, we can see here, if we preview this, this actually gives us some nice little code snippets and gives us links and callbacks to where actually things are located. So I can click here now to create this pull request. This is much more descriptive than it's ever been before. And this looks really good. So if we have a look at this, we can see that it is much more descriptive than ever was. It links to the files as well and where the things have been changed. So you can see merging is blocked because I do need a, a reviewer, but this gives my reviewer now a lot more information about why I'm creating this pull request, the changes that I've made, and more importantly, why those changes have been made. So I hope this has given you some insight into GitHub Copilot and how to use it. And I hope you uh, enjoy using GitHub Copilot to unblock yourself and use it as an AI pair programmer. Don't forget, you are always the developer in charge. You are the pilot, GitHub is your co-pilot. You are still responsible for the code you ship at the end of the day. So make sure you're always checking the work. And if in doubt, do ask a senior developer. Happy coding.